Hey guys, in this video I'll be going over ACLS landings for the Hornet. First you need to set up your carrier. If you click on the carrier, you can choose the frequency right here. Then you need to select waypoint zero and you need to click advanced waypoint actions. You need to click add and perform command and you want to do activate TACAN. Then you want to choose the channel you want and you want to select your unit. Then you want to add another event and you want to do activate ICLS and same thing, select your unit and choose whatever channel you want. Then you need to activate the link for This is the data link that the ACLS system works over. Select your unit and choose what frequency you want for the data link. And lastly, you need to do activate ACLS and choose your unit. Now, technically, you don't need TACAN and ICLS to do an ACLS landing. It's just I highly recommend having them on because it makes it a lot easier. Also, you can only do an ACLS landing if it's nighttime or if there's bad weather. So I'm going to make it rain. So I'm going to and go to the cloud settings and I'm just going to choose overcast and rain one and click OK. Now we have the mission editor set up to do an ACLS landing. And by the way, you do not need the super carrier to do an ACLS landing. You can do it on the regular carrier if you want. All right, let's go ahead and do the ACLS landing. First, like always, when you're landing on the ship, make sure the hook bypass is set to carrier and make sure the anti-skid is turned off. Then we want to turn on our data link, TACAN, and ILS. If you hold right shift and Okay, you can click to open your knee board and you can see the information for the ships. We're landing on the Stennis today, so the TACAN is channel 3 x-ray, so I'm going to click the TACAN button, turn it on, and I'm going to dial in 3. And once you turn on your TACAN, if you go to the support page and you click HSI, you should see the TACAN here, which should be a triangle symbol. Now let's turn on the ILS. I'm going to click the ILS button, turn it on, and dial in channel 3. And now let's turn on the data link. If you press the data link button once, it opens the link for menu and you want to turn it on and dial in the frequency, which is 337. So I'm going to do 3370 and click enter. Now we have all our electronic systems on and we can get rid of the kneeboard. I'm going to zoom in a little bit on the map. Next thing you want to do is contact the carrier on the radio. On the other types of carrier landings, we did like an ILS landing. Contacting them on the radio was optional. However, if you want to do an ACLS landing, you have to contact them on the ATC or it will not work. If your mission you're in has easy communication turned on, then you can just click backslash on your keyboard, go to ATC, find your carrier and press inbound. But if you're not using easy communication in the mission, you have to dial in the frequency on the radio. So go to one of your radios, I'll just do COM1, and use your mouse to scroll it to M for manual frequency. And if you go back to the kneeboard, you can see the ATC is 127.5. So I'm gonna dial in 127500 and click enter. Then if you're not using easy comms, you cannot just click backslash. You have to open the menu for the specific radio. So for COM1, it's right alt backslash. For COM2, it's right control backslash. So I'm gonna open the menu, do ATC and find the John Stennis and click inbound. Now when you contact them on the radio, they're going to tell you the bearing of the runway, which in my case was 327. Another way you can get the bearing of the runway is by clicking on the ship and looking at the heading, which is 336, and then do minus 9. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the TACAN, and once you have TACAN selected, you can use the course switch, and if you hold it down, you want to type in that bearing they told us, which was 327. So I'm going to do 327 and click enter. And now we have the bearing for the runway on the ship. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fly to be lined up with the runway. The way you can do that is that you're going to see this arrow on your heads up display. So since it's to the right of my velocity vector, I'm going to turn right and move until I get the arrow to move and go through my velocity vector. So I'm going to turn a little bit towards the arrow. And once it's going through the velocity vector, I'm going to turn back and point my plane towards the ship. Now that I am on the right heading for the ship's runway, which you can see here, now I'm going to contact the carrier again, and I'm going to choose this option that says commencing. Once you do that, if you open the radio, there should be a new option that says platform. 
Now there's something really important about this option. When you press this, you don't want to be too close to the carrier. In my experience, you want to be at least around seven or eight miles away or farther from the carrier. Because if you're too close to the carrier, if you're closer than like seven miles, then the ACLS system will just not work for some reason. So make sure you're at least seven or eight miles away from the carrier and then you want to press this option that says platform. Remember you can see how far away you are from the carrier. If you have the tack end on, you can see the range right here. Zero, one, six, platform. That is going to be the last thing we communicate on the radio. Now let's go ahead and set the rest of the plane up for landing. I really should have done this earlier, but I can do it now. I'm going to click the ACL button, and on my left screen, you can see the automatic carrier landing page come up. And it's going to say test right here. And if you have your data link turned on on the correct frequency, then after a couple seconds, it'll say ACL1. And you can also see these chevrons here that point to the carrier. Also, when you turn the ACL on, you're going to notice it automatically turns on your ILS2. And now what you're going to do is you're going to fly to the ship as if you're doing an ICLS landing. So I have the ICLS bar here, and I'm just going to fly to center the bar in the middle of my velocity vector. And once I get closer to the ship, I'm going to set it up to do a carrier landing like normal, lower the hook and the gear and the flaps. So let's go ahead and do it now. I'll drop the hook down and once I'm slower than 250 knots, I'll drop down the gear too. Let me zoom in a little bit on my HSI here. Now I'm also going to drop my flaps down to full. Now from here, you want to proceed like a normal ICLS landing. However, once you reach exactly six miles away from the carrier, they're going to contact you on the radio. As you can see, at exactly six miles away, they contacted me and they said ACLS lock on. And as you can see, it now says mode one on my screen, which means the ACLS system is ready for me to turn on the autopilot and have the plane land itself. So what you wanna do is you wanna get the plane set up for landing. You wanna have a good angle of attack and be pretty much on the glide slope it doesn't have to be perfect, but at least decently close. And then what you want to do is click the autopilot button and press coupled and that will turn on the autopilot. Now there's something really important. You need to have your stick centered out or the autopilot will not turn on. If you hold right control and click enter, you can see this thing on the bottom left of your screen and the diamond is where your stick is. So you want to have your stick centered in the middle and then the autopilot should turn on when you click the coupled button. Also, I'd highly recommend using the auto throttle at the same time, which will keep your plane at the right angle of attack for landing. You can turn it on by just pressing T on your keyboard. At this point, your gear should already be down, but just in case it isn't, remember that you need to have your gear and flaps down to have the auto throttle in landing mode. Let's go ahead and do that now. I'm going to get onto the glide slope, get the right angle of attack, and then I'm gonna turn on the autopilot. The way that you know the autopilot is on is because when you press it, it should have a colon next to coupled. Also, you should see coupled PR on the hood. Next, I'm gonna press T to turn on my auto throttle. And from here, the plane should be able to land itself. The last important thing to remember is that when you hit the deck, you want to put your throttle all the way forward into full afterburner, just in case the hook doesn't catch the wire so you can take off again. And that was how to do an ACLS landing in the Hornet. Thanks for checking out this video, and I'll see you later.